Quick video on how to edge find a part. A few key points I would like to point out before we get started. We are going to be using an edge finder. An edge finder is something that is going to find the edge of the part. Uh, it's a lot more accurate than a wiggler or anything like that. So if you are needing precision, you need to use an indicator. But if you're needing within five thou, a edge finder will definitely do the trick. We are going to have a video on how to pick up an edge with an indicator later. But even before you pick up an edge with an indicator, you will need to edge find it to get you somewhat close. Okay, so first things first, do never use a drill chuck. A drill chuck is not as accurate as a collet. If you need to be accurate, then use a collet for your edge finder. And an edge finder is a spring-loaded shaft that has, we're going to show you guys here shortly, we're going to zoom in on it and everything. But you can go on Amazon, you can go on our website under recommended tools, we'll have an edge finder link for you to buy an edge finder. But what you want to do is put in a collet, put in your edge finder, and the spindle speed needs to be anywhere from 1200 to 1400. The very next thing we're going to do is put a part in here. I'm going to take out the drill chuck, I'm going to put in a collet, I'm going to put in an edge finder, and go over the basic rules of edge finding, and then we're going to pick up a corner of a part. Now I have my edge finder. This is an edge finder. I have it in the collet. I have my part up there. I'm going to edge find the back right of this part. And another rule that I forgot to go over is you want to be sure to mic the diameter that you're going to be edge finding up against. Now it won't be the major diameter, the diameter that's in your collet. It'll be the smaller diameter that's going against your part. Because what you're going to do is divide that by two. And when this edge finds, it's edge finding the quadrant of this smaller shaft. So it's not going to be bringing it to the center. You have to physically move the knee down and then move to the center of the shaft. So if it mics at 200 thou, which this one is 200 thou, I'm going to move 100 thou. Now another thing is do not buy the cheap edge finders. They tend to not kick because what happens is this edge finder is going to wobble and then as it's coming up to the edge then it will start to center itself and then it, when, when it gets to that edge it's going to kick. So the cheaper edge finders don't really kick. They will kick but it's not as accurate as buying like a Starrett and we'll have like I said a link to that under recommended tools or you can go on Amazon which is actually who we use and uh, just go ahead and Google Starrett or Amazon Starrett edge finders and get yourself one of those. It may cost a few extra dollars, but it's gonna save your part, which costs you more money. So, uh, another rule is you want to bring the knee down. You don't wanna stick out the quill when you're edge finding. So if I have to go over here and edge find this, I'm gonna bring the knee down, move my edge finder over that 100 thou, re-zero it, and then go to the back and edge find my Y. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I am going to turn the spindle on and as you can see it's wobbling out. The very next thing you want to do is start moving your table in X and it really doesn't matter if you edge find X or Y first as long as in the end you get your zero zero the right way. So I'm looking for the kick. All right there it kicked. So I'm going to stop the spindle because you don't want your edge finder rubbing up against your part. So I'm going to go ahead and reset my digital readout to read zero. And instead of bringing up the knee or bringing down the knee and you know moving over that hundred thou, I'm going to stop right where I'm at, move in Y away from my part so I can edge find Y. Now notice how my edge finder is not, the part isn't just on the tip of the edge finder. It's actually about midway, if not just a hair more. So you want to try to be at least in the middle of the smaller shaft when you're edge finding. So I'm going to move, turn my spindle on. And now I'm going to move in Y until it kicks. So I, if it's not wobbling, you can stick your finger in there and just kick it to where it wobbles. The wobbling is just showing you when you get close to your part. So I can go fast and as soon as this starts centering it's going to slow down and get as you can see it's not wobbling anymore. So that means I'm, I'm now touching my part so I need to slow down. So now I'm going slow and there it kicked. So I stopped turning my spindle off, hit the brake. Now I'm resetting my Y. 
So now I'm going to go to 0 and X until my digital readouts read 0. Now if I go past my 0, I need to back off and try again because with your table, it has something called slack. So if you go past it 2,000, you don't want to just turn your spindle the other way and go to 0. What you want to do is back off and uh, turn your handle the same way every time. You want to back off at least 100, 200 thou, and then come back to zero to get the slack out of the table. All right, so now what I'm going to do is bring my knee down. And then I'm going to move over 100 thou and Y in the right direction. So be sure to pay attention because you can go the wrong direction. Kind of center up my edge finder a little bit so I know I'm going the right direction. Go 100 thou and Y. All right, and then a hundred thou and X.